peer and group supervision play a significant part of collaborative observation. And what we need to consider are the, the roles and the approach to supervision as part of collaborative observation. Within collaborative observation, there is always a focus person, the reflective practitioner, for example, and a mediator and a supervisor. And we can look at these three roles and how they combine. The focus person is the subject of the dialogue, essentially. They provide the subject of discussion within the group. The supervisor is the individual who listens actively to the dialogue, asks questions in a way which builds confidence and self-esteem and supports the individual and uses questions to investigate and probe and to help the focused person uh, think much deeper and further in terms of their experience. And the mediator is there to listen to this dynamic process between the focused person and the supervisor and to work to uh, support the process of dialogue. So there are particular roles which uh, each individual in the process of collaboration take on. The focus person clearly defines the themes and the subject of the dialogue. While the supervisor is the individual who asks questions about um, what has been seen and um, creates an investigative dialogue, a discussion to explore and appreciate uh, what has been going on. And then the mediator is the individual that um, keeps a check on the dialogue and gives feedback on the process of the dialogue to the focal person and the supervisor. In a sense, the mediator listens carefully and then sums up the, the content and the process of the dialogue between the two. And in this sense, we can see that the three together make a reflecting team. The reflecting team is made up of the mediator, the supervisor and the focus person working together regularly over time. So the role of the reflecting team um, is about listening to dialogue without interrupting um, so that a full understanding can be acquired. The reflecting team will take notes on the dialogue to record uh, the content and to give a focus to the individual's concerns. Um, the notes will also help the reflecting team find connections between exper experiences and um, to uh, understand the associations between different aspects of the process. And the reflecting team will uh, discuss what they've seen in a very non-judgmental way. And the supervisor uh, can make suggestions and propose questions um, to help the focused person uh, understand better the experience and uh, get more clarity about how to move forward. So there are particular rules uh, that should be followed. Um, the uh, the roles within the group need to be very clearly defined around the theme uh, structured by the focus person. Uh, the approach should be very appreciative um, of the focus person rather than uh, constructive. Um, and the feedback needs to be very clear and precise. Um, the supervisor should engage in um, useful questioning techniques which um, help develop depth and detail for the focused person and the whole process should be about building confidence for the individual. Now for the reflecting team constructive feedback should be respectful. It should certainly respect the focused person and acknowledge the insights uh, of others in the reflecting team, their values and opinions and their ideas. And, reflect, uh, and feedback in for the reflective team should show that there is understanding and recognition of feelings and views within the group. And the bottom line for the reflecting team is that it will help uh, all members of the team, but in particular the focus person, get a better understanding of their strengths 
and their areas for development and also the potential that they have that they can use in order to make these changes. The questioning technique uh, is an important part of group supervision um, and it's important then that open questions are used as these um, promote examination and exploration. For example, questions like, can you give me more details about that would be a useful strategy. And questions to make the focus person elaborate on their experience and uh, uh, on um, the understanding that they've gained from that experience. Uh, for example, questions like, why use this particular activity? And why did you do this thing? Um, this gets the focal person to uh, really think critically about what they've done. And questions by the, super, uh, by the supervisor should also uh, challenge the focus, focus person. Um, what did or do you intend the students to learn from this particular lesson? Would um, challenge the focus person to look and reflect on what they were intending and whether that intention was actually met. And uh, the questions can uh, also be used to direct attention to particular areas uh, of the lesson for the focus person. For example, uh, the use of resources um, and, uh, within a lesson uh, in a direct way, uh, but indirectly also is uh, to get the focus person to reflect on other people's um, expectations and experience. And it's, of course, useful also to use closed questions uh, as part of the reflecting team. In this way, uh, there is a lot of clarity to be gained from validating and interpreting the experience. Um, so, for example, the supervisor could say something like, um, is it correct uh, that I understand this particular thing? Um, because then... Uh, the answer is yes or no and that provides clarity in terms of the reflection. And the supervisor can ask uh, particular probing questions. Probing questions uh, get the reflective practitioner, the focus person, to look in depth and detail at the experience and how they're interpreting that experience. For example, the supervisor might say, what exactly do you mean by this? Or what exactly were you trying to achieve when you use this activity? Um, this would probe much more deeply into the experience. And so what we can see is that the process of collaborative observation, where there is a focused person and a supervisor, has a number of dimensions to it. It can be used to inform or familiarise the group to particular aspects of practice. And of course, it can be used to influence practice for the focus person. And there can be very linear assumptions about the practices which are being employed, as well as circular assumptions, or in other words, the ability to look back and then to change practice from what's been going on. And so there are particular roles to be taken on within the process of collaborative observation. For example, the focus person and the supervisor can see themselves as detectives, focusing on facts and looking for understanding. Can be as an advisor, looking for solutions in relation to issues and problems. It can actually be about just exploring understandings and getting a much better appreciation or it can be about looking at perspectives from different viewpoints, facilitating understanding. And so the roles that are taken on and the rules which need to be followed are very precise. Um, but the supervision of uh, a focused person as part of collaborative ob observation is a very useful technique for reflection on practice.